does Black Lives Matter? Notice, I didn't ask, do Black Lives Matter? Because in terms of the individual, of course your life matters to me. The color of one's skin makes zero difference in the inherent value of one's life. I'm well aware of the history of the United States regarding slavery. Jim Crow. I know that history for black people in our country has not been favorable. And while I've had, like many others, moments where I felt unfairly targeted by the police, I've heard from numerous of my black friends that they've felt targeted on numerous more occasions than I have. I know that must wear on the psyche. I acknowledge that. So yes, each and every one of my black friends' lives matters. But that doesn't mean that I'm required to or will shill for an organization that in its current state I disagree with. My issue is not with a single black person out there. My issue is with a movement that I see as a fascistic attempt to install evil Marxist policies in America and around the world. But first, a little bit about human psychology and why so many people are repeating this mantra. When I was in fifth grade, our teacher gave us a piece of paper with a series of instructions on it. The first was to put your pencil down on top of the paper, sit quietly, and await further instruction from the teacher. Each subsequent instruction gave students menial tasks to complete, such as putting two circles in the top right-hand corner of the piece of paper, stars and triangles in the middle, and squares and rectangles in either of the other corners, until eventually every single piece of paper looked like Van Gogh's Starry Night. At first, there were a few holdouts, but as more people saw others completing the series of tasks, they followed suit. Out of 25 of us, there were only two of us, me being one, that stayed resolute in the face of others' actions with what we believed to be correct. As human beings, we followed the lead of others. Biologically, there is safety in numbers. The madness of crowds has been demonstrated time and time again throughout human history. Once again, I see that madness rising. I see it escalating. And I'm telling you not to put that black box on your social media page, not to follow the herd of lemmings over the cliff. At least before you do, investigate and know what you're propping up. Know what you're supporting before you follow suit. Here is why I do not support the organization, underlying organization, Black Lives Matter. On their webpage, they state, we disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement. Right there, I can tell you something is majorly amiss. Advocating for the destruction of the nuclear family, I know as a father of two that the best things that our kids have going for them is the fact that they have two very loving, caring parents. And I wish that for every single person out there. Yet this group advocates against this. They want to disrupt the nuclear family. There is nothing more certain in my mind that parents care more for their children than any other member of the community possibly could. The fact is biological, it's evolutionary. I know that BLM got leading science journals and Caltech, amongst others, to shut down STEM, the hashtag. So they really aren't into the science. At Evergreen College, Brett Weinstein reported that one of his students was called a race traitor for studying evolutionary biology, a hard science. Given that you don't think that science matters, that you don't think that parents who have skin in the game do the best job raising their children, why not advocate against gravity and for flight with a pair of self-made wings as long as you're going to be this delusional? Now again, one man's vision ushers in a new era of aerial travel, proving the power of imagination and intellect. The magic of flight! That doesn't mean that you can't have community members helping to raise the child. But the idea of disrupting the nuclear family, disrupting, again, that's their work, not mine. That comes directly from their website. 
is abhorrent, it's evil, it's absurd, and it's downright stupid. Sadly, since the 1960s, the rate of single parents amongst black communities has risen from over 20% to in excess of 70%, with absolutely horrifying results for the community. That's why it's not the neighborhood, it's why it's the hood. Do you want to try to disrupt my family, my neighbor's family, with an idea that has proven to be unviable in today's world? No, thank you. I cannot support you right then and there. Meanwhile, if you look throughout their literature, they use the Marxist term Conrad often. The founders are openly, by their own admission, Marxists, communists. I personally have lived in former Eastern Bloc countries, and I've heard the stories that people who were forced to live their life in communism, and their stories are horrific. If you want to hear the worst of the worst stories, then read the Gulag Archipelago. Or you can see it personally still today. You can see the nightmarish utopia as it took hold in Cambodia. You can still go to the killing fields and see the skulls piled up high and deep. You can literally pick bone fragments off of the ground in the killing fields. You can see the trees where they smashed babies' heads. And when you argue against communism, you might often get the response in order to create the utopia you have to crack a few eggs. I have never seen the subsequent omelet. Have you? The group cites the death of Michael Brown as their catalyst. Without going into details of the case, the premise of this being a bad shoot is patently false, as proven not only in front of a grand jury, but also corroborated by Obama's own Justice Department and Eric Holder, who is a little bit of a radical himself. A movement that is founded on shaky ground and logic deserves extra scrutiny. But if this organization really did care about black lives, they would be out protesting the Crips, protesting the blood and the killers that are running around our inner cities, including the south side of Chicago, where in the most recent riots, it's managed to set a record for the number of homicides in a single day. Our congratulations for this record in order. Why not protest this? The number of dead in Chicago over the Father's Day weekend far surpassed the number of unarmed suspects shot by the police in all of 2019. That was in one locale. Why not go out there and protest them? Listen, what happened to George Floyd was horrific, and you won't find anybody to say otherwise, anything contrary. That cop was at minimum guilty of massive brutality and very likely murder. And I honestly can tell you that I cried when I saw it. It was that horrific. And I'm sure that other people experienced the same emotional reaction. But how do you know for sure that it was racial? How is this evidence necessarily of systemic racism? Maybe the cop was just an asshole. Some policemen are, unfortunately. I've had that thought with my run-ins with the cops. The narrative that they are trying to portray that blacks are disproportionately killed by police is false. A Harvard economist, Ronald Fryer, who is black by the way, completed a study where he entered in with the presupposition that blacks would get unequal treatment from the law regarding the numbers that are killed. What he actually discovered was that black suspects are around 25% less, 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 less likely to be shot than their white counterpart suspects are. And in the most egregious situations where officers were not attacked first, but nevertheless fired their guns at the suspects, they were more likely to do so when the suspect was white. More whites are killed by the cops each year, both in absolute numbers and in proportion to their contribution to crime and violence in our society. That, those are the facts that Ronald Fryer discovered. So it's a false premise that they are going under, that there is massive police brutality today, not in the past, but today against black people. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. It does. But let's really examine the statistics behind the premise because their premise works every, in every way except for statistically.
in addition to wanting to obliterate the police, to put them out of commission, which would most negatively affect poor black neighborhoods around America, much as what take, took place recently when the police stood down and murders, looting, and rioting damaged the very businesses that provided jobs and meaning and economic prosperity in their neighborhoods. Not to mention the fact that many of the, neighbor, of the neighborhood businesses that were looted, that were burnt down, were black owned. Today we found core boy Bala, who invested his life savings into opening this sports bar cleaning up. While our camera was there, looters came back to try to steal his safe. Right, trying to steal the safe! I don't know what we're gonna do. We worked so hard to get here. Another argument that I have with BLM is the fact that they want reparations not only for descendants of slaves, but for all black people who immigrated here from Africa just due to the color of their skin. I wouldn't agree with reparations to begin with. I didn't even have a single relative in the contiguous United States in 1865. But you want to rob me of my money when I did nothing wrong in the form of some collective guilt due to my skin color? And you want to distribute it to somebody else who just happens to have more mel melanin? But not only that, now you want to distribute that to people who arrived here from Nigeria last week based solely on the dark color of their skin. Are you going to do a measurement as to the exact amount of melanin that someone has and then distribute greater amounts to them to account for the fact that somebody might have white blood in them, making them less viable a source for the funds? So if any of my black friends ask me if their life matters, I say, of course. Do black lives matter? Duh, life is sacred. And the fact that they, we are alive in human form is an absolute miracle to behold. And I will support your right to equal treatment under the law. I will support reforms to the police that will make our system better for all. But if you want to try to coerce me under threat of cancellation, under the possible threat of physical violence, to stand behind what I believe to be a Marxist, black supremacist organization, who, if they really cared about black life, would be concentrating their efforts on the violence that is plaguing our inner cities today, who, in my belief, are trying to make a gigantic money grab, which they've been successful in post-George Floyd, an organization that wants to disrupt, aka obliterate, the nuclear family and throw children to the mercy of a community who doesn't have the same skin in the game as a biological parent into some mythical leftist communist utopia that really just allows them to be more easily brainwashed. And you want me to support them by putting a black square on my social media page? No, I won't be doing that. Put your pencil down and at least consider what you're doing before you follow the other lemmings off the cliff. Peace to all my black friends out there. Love you guys and all my white ones and Asian. If you think that this material is worth sharing, then please do so. And if you think I'm wrong about something, leave a comment and attack the logic rather than the person in any form of an ad hominem attack. Peace and blessings to everybody out there and feel free to subscribe. Peace. I mean, peace.